let them know. Okay, what I wanted to share on this evening was about God's will in our life. Because so many of us go around, I wonder what God's will is in my life. Or I need to find out what God's will is in my life. I wonder what God's will is in my life. And we do a lot of that. Well, I think if we rewind the tape and first go back to recognizing what are some of the things that we know is God's will in our life. See, there are some things that are concrete in our life that is God's will. Now, we each are individuals. There's a, you know, God's will may be for you to be a pharmacist, a secretary, a doctor. That's all different, but there are some concrete founded things that he wants to be in all of our lives. And that's what I think if we focused on those things, then the other questions about, I wonder what would come to you a little easier. Come to you without some strife. Come to you without going around the mountain several times about, I wonder what it is. Because see, if we don't get the principles and the foundation right, we'll never get anywhere. If we don't operate in God's will on some concrete foundation, we can't build a house. We can't function in what his will is for our, our purpose. So that's what I wanted to talk on tonight. Can you put up on Amos uh, 524 for me? You can just do the Amplified. Amos 5.24. But let justice run down like waters, and righteousness as a mighty and ever-flowing stream. God's will in our life is that we're seeking justice, and we want to do things right. We want to do the right thing. God's will is for us to do the right thing. And it's not complicated. Just do the right thing. Well, what's right? Does it line up with Scripture? Yes. That's the right thing for us to do in our lives. Does it line up with the world's point of view? Mm, you might want to check that point of view against Scripture. To see if you're really operating in what God wants you to do. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 1. 1 Corinthians 14 1. Eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love, make it your aim, your greatest quest. And earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowments, gifts, especially that you may prophesy, interpret the divine will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching. There's a lot in that one. Love. 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 God's will is that we what? Love one another. There's no need to be seeking out what God's will is for your own personal life if you can't love others. That's a big step for a lot of people. There's a lot of hurts in the way, a lot of rebellion, a lot of bitterness. Those side effects that we all deal with that get in the way of us really loving someone. You know, I shared Sunday, I don't know if everyone heard me about my, my issue with my dad's oldest daughter and the years of bitterness and hatred that built up over a non-relationship. But yet when I finally sat down with her to go over some things about her dad, nothing but love filled my heart for her. And she reciprocated that back to me. There was no, no, there was no gate there, no fence in the way. Love overflowed. Now, if I wasn't where I was in my life spiritually, I wouldn't have let love reign in that situation. I'd have looked at her and said, let me tell you something, girl. And I'd have let her have it. 
Because in her life, she turned her back on her dad and did some evil things toward him. But see, we're not back there now. We're here. We're dealing with life now. So love, love one another. Well, I can't love that person. Yes, you can. If you get yourself out of the way. We got to get ourself out of the way to love one another. I could camp out on the love one, but we're going to go on. Mark 10, 43 through 45. Mark 10, 43 through 45. But this is not to be so among you. Instead, whoever desires to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be the most important and first in rank among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to have service rendered to him, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for instead of many. There's the example. God's will is that we serve one another putting others before ourselves, putting others before me, how could I do that? I'm me. <laughs> Isn't that how it goes? Wait, I'm me. I got to put me before others. You may get somewhere temporarily like that, but you will not get endurance, sustained life. You won't get true friendships. You won't get God's blessing. Because you're so wrapped up in yourself, you don't need God's blessing, by the way, when you're like that. So serving one another. That's a backbreaker for a lot of people. But they broke more. They didn't break a single bone, but they broke more in the greatest servant. So we could learn how to serve. It's a challenge, but serve one another. But what's that got to do with God's will in my life? You don't know what the soup tastes like until you taste the soup. <laughs> you got to taste what serving others is before you know what it really means. You'll get somewhere about your own God's will in your purpose life if you learn to serve others. He said it, I didn't. I'm just reading it to you. And then here's another one, and you don't have to put this one up, but it just an exit. God instructed the people as follows. God instructed the people as follows. What is that doing? He's given some instruction there. Here's what you need to do, my people. And God simply is saying, it's his will for you to obey his laws. It's his will for you to obey him. You want a fruitful life? Obey me. You want the will I have for your personal life to come into effect? Well, then just obey me. You don't have to go get 17 awards, 19 degrees, show me your worth. You just need to obey me. Just obey me. Daddy, I want this car. It's a great toy. No, son, because you haven't been obedient. Oh, you mean I got to be obedient to get stuff? Yes. You must be obedient. But now try to say that to a 47-year-old. Oh, I don't have to do that. I'll do what I want to do. I'll get what I want. I don't have to obey nobody. Why don't I have to obey anyone? I do my thing. What am I hurting anybody for? All about who again? Self, me, me, me. This is all about me. As long as I'm not hurting anyone, why does it matter? 
Remember, what you do affects you, what you do affects you, what you do affects him. What we do affects everybody. Remember that. Galatians 5.22 through 26. Galatians 5.22 through 26. Malfunction here. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which is his presence with accomplishes, is love, joy, gladness, peace, patience, and even temper, forbearance. Whew, boy, this is too much, isn't it? I mean, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility. Self-control, self-restraint, continence against such things. There is no law that can bring a charge. And those who belong to Christ Jesus, the Messiah, have crucified the flesh, the godless human nature, with its passions and appetites and desires. If we live by the Holy Spirit... Let us also walk by the Spirit. Whoa, did you catch that one? If we live by the Holy Spirit, well then, walk by the Holy Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line. Our conduct controlled by the Spirit. Let us not become vainglorious and self-conceited, there's self again, competitive and challenging and provoking and irritating to one another. Ooh. Oh. I don't know if I should go on. <laughs> Envying and being jealous of one another. There's a lot in those scriptures there. A lot. God's will, again, is that we live under the Holy Spirit. If you want to stay clean and pure and do the things that you should do, doing the right things, let the Holy Spirit be your guide. Let the Holy Spirit walk with you. Wherever you go, Take your suitcase that has the Holy Spirit with you. Make sure you got it. See, when we go to a trip, we like to prepare our luggage, everything we need, everything we're going to take, what we're going to do when we get there, how we're going to get back. We got all prepared, but yet we forget the most important thing. What about the Holy Spirit? Is he in, is he in my luggage? Is the Holy Spirit with me? And then if he is with me, Am I letting him walk this thing out with me? See, a lot of Christians get stalemated on, look, I got saved. That's good. Step two, walk this thing out. We all want you saved, but see, then we want you to go on to step two and start walking this thing out. And if you don't let the Holy Spirit walk this out with you, you are going to fail over and over again. Because see, when we get saved, we think, whoa, I got it made now. And then here comes bumps in the roads. Here comes trials, tribulations. And then we end up back in the gutter again. Forgetting about what getting saved was about. Because see, without the Holy Spirit operating in your life, you fall off. Continuously. It's like principles that are grounded in your life. You don't let them go. But if you don't accept that they're grounded in your life, you're going to cheat people. You're going to cheat yourself. You're going to hang around with the people you shouldn't be. You're going to become the person you shouldn't be. You're going to get in a world of mess. Why? 
because I was not letting the Holy Spirit who I invited in my life, I invited him in there, but I just kind of trapped him. I didn't, I didn't give him permission to walk this out with me, to guide my steps, to tell me where I should be or where I shouldn't be, to help me find out the will for God in my life or not. I thought I wanted to be this, but when I asked the Holy Spirit, boy, was I wrong. Check yourself against the Holy Spirit. It's God's will that we be under the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. So if you want to know what God's will is in your own life, make sure you're allowing the Holy Spirit to operate in your life. Proverbs 16.3 Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to Him. He will cause your... Look, He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to His will. And so shall your plans be established and succeed. And succeed. I want to read that one again. Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to Him. And then I love what happens then. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. See, when we give up the self-fight and do it God's way, he will cause our thoughts to be agreeable with him. You struggling in your life? Let the Holy Spirit take over. You're struggling with what you should do about certain things? Let the Holy Spirit be your God about what to do. Because then your thoughts will become agreeable to his will. And so shall your plans be established and succeed. Why do I make plans and try things? Nothing just ever works. Check it against the Holy Spirit. Check it against the Holy Spirit. And again, God's will in this thing is that we do everything as though we're doing it for him. Ooh. That's challenging. That's challenging. Do it as though, well, it's like when you know guests are coming over. You clean everything up. You get it spit, polished, everything. When you know they're coming over. You're ready for them. You know they're coming. Ready for them. Right? Ready for them. A little bit of dust. Come on in. You're ready for them. But what if they came over unannounced? (laughs) <laughs> Shh, turn the lights off. Shh. Duck down. Don't say nothing. Shut that dog up right now. <laughs> Is that true or not? We're not ready. Well, I'm not prepared. Uh-uh. Don't come over here. It's the same as when you're, you're, you're doing something and you're, you're half-stepping it. I, this is good enough for my standard. But what is God's standard? You know, when I, when I have my guys do work and I do work, we might not be the best, but we do our best. That's what I ask my guys. Do your best, even if it fails. Do your best. Because, see, I want to look at the customer in the eye and say, we did our best. We did our best. Your best ain't good enough. I'm sorry, but that was the best we could do. See, then you can keep your chin up a little bit. You don't have to go cowering in a corner. Then I also know that Listen, I just didn't do good for you, Mr. Customer. 
good, good for the guy who calls the shots. See, I have a boss, and his name is God. And when I do these things, and when I do these jobs, I act like he's the one paying me to check. So I want to do my best. I want to keep the house clean like he's coming over every day. I don't want to just shuffle around because I know he's coming. I want to be doing everything as though he's here right now, looking at me, watching me. Because then again, my thoughts become what? Agreeable. What is God's will in my life? Get the concrete things in, in this life that he has that is concrete for your life, okay? What is God's will in my life? Well, there's certain things that I ain't even doing that is, I know that is God's will in my life. I'm not walking with the Holy Spirit. I'm not doing works that, as though I was doing it for him. And if you're not, do them. Then we can get on to the personal side of what's God's will in my life. It's simple. Put up Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil. To give you hope and in your final outcome. That's a promise from God. I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They're thoughts and plans for peace, not for evil. To give you hope in your final outcome. See, when you're walking with God and you're letting the Holy Spirit, listen, you're a successful person. You're walking in success. You know, you hear about heroes and idols and, uh, boy, they're just a role model. The greatest role model I personally knew was a man who I called dad who had an eighth grade education but led a simple Truthful life. And I learned from him by example more than anything he ever said. He said a few words, but I listened when he did. But I watched him. And I learned. Simple. Just like God's... Listen, these aren't, are these complicated scriptures? They're not complicated. They're not complicated commands. They're very simple. Love one another. Just do the right thing. Follow me. The reason they're complicated is because we like to mix oil and water. (laughs) We can't run full throttle. But we try to. And we hit face bottom every time. Every time. You know, in my banking profession, I saw some people walk through the door. Listen. Listen. If they wanted to sleep all day, they had a pillow with money in it, they could sleep on it. (laughs) They didn't have to do nothing else ever again for money. And they were some of the most miserable people you'd ever see in your life. They were not happy. They enjoyed money for seasons. Happiness wasn't in them. Because they were not living a fruitful life. I saw it all the time. A, a gentleman, well, my business is going bad. I'm, I'm, I may lose my house. What are my children going to think of me if I lose my house? What are your children going to think of you? Don't your children just think of you as dad? What are you putting in your children that they think more of material things than they do their dad? See, we get the foundation wrong. You know, if I lost my house tonight... I wouldn't look at Rachel and go, don't care for you anymore. What is how stupid is that of us to think that way? 
what would she think of me if my house was gone? What if I lost my house? There's another one out there. What if I lose it all? Forget it all. Remember, this life is but a vapor. Don't hold on to the material aspects of this life. Don't hold on to just the momentary pleasures of this life. Try to walk in what God's will is. Just be obedient to me, son. Be obedient to me, daughter. I'm not asking the world out of you. I'm just asking you to do a few things. Walk in the righteousness that's been bestowed upon you because of the blood. It's like when people can't say they're righteous. Why can't you? God? Listen, Jesus sacrificed himself to make you righteous. He is not a liar. So you are righteous. Get concrete things down in your life. Well, I'm more than a conqueror. Well, yeah, I'm not. No, I am more than a conqueror. When Satan's in your face, get behind me, Satan. Guess what you're doing then? You're walking out God's will. He doesn't want you to be a cowering worm over here that, that doesn't stand up. He wants you to profess his name. He wants you to say, I am righteous. I am more than a conqueror. I've been made whole. I've been made whole. See, we don't even want to say we've been made whole. We have been made whole, people. There's a great, great sacrifice that was made to make us whole. And when you see that sacrifice and you say, I accept you, Jesus, you are made whole. There is no more guilt, condemnation. There's no more hiding. You take on that armor of God and use it. Armor's no good unless you use it. Shield will not deflect the arrow unless you put it on your arm and put it up in front of you. Your sword will not cut the serpent's head off unless you take a swipe at it. So exercise your armor. In fact, pull it out of the closet, shine it up real pretty. Be ready for battle. Because just like the guests sometimes are coming, guess what? There's an enemy coming in the dead of night. And he's not coming to steal your VCR. He's coming to kill you. Absolutely kill you. That's just not a perception. That's a fact. Any way he can destroy you. Any way he can destroy the family unit. Any way he can make you think your kids are against you. Any way he can make you look at your wife with suspicion. Any way he can make you think your neighbor's doing something against you. Anything he can put in your mind that sticks, he's trying. And if you don't have your armor on and ready, something's going to stick. So God said, I've given you this armor. Well, God, I'm going to put my armor on. I'm going to keep it on. And I'm not just, it's not going to be, it's not dinged up. His armor doesn't get dinged up. His armor stays perfect, impenetrable. The only time the dart sticks is when you don't have your armor on. But if your armor's on, the dart does not stick. The Word of God is infallible. It is 100% true and accurate. Let me give you some advice. Don't ever test God's Word. It is true. If you don't think that dart will stick you if you don't have his armor on, go on out there and play with the world and the devil. You'll come in here looking like a porcupine. You'll be all messed up. <laughs> so, going back, get these things. Be, be, before you want to step into what's God's will for my life, just say, what's God's will for my day-to-day for my -day living?
Not what I want to do with my life and what profession, but just my day-to-day living. My day-to-day time. You know what God's will is for you? You really want to know? A relationship. He wants a relationship with you. That's his will. He wants to know you intimately. And see, he kn- although he knows you intimately, he doesn't intrude on your privacy. See, you got to reciprocate. God, I know you love me, but, and, know, and you know me, but let me tell you some things about me I want to talk to you about. See, then there comes the relationship. The relationship. The love. The feeding. You want God to feed you? Have a relationship with him. Go his house, go and announce. Just not, hey, you in there, God? I'm hungry for some of your word. He's got a buffet all the time, always open. So get the things that we know that is God's will in our life as concrete, foundation things. If it was in a manual on, on operating, how do I operate day to day? By God. God tell me. He tells us. We don't have to search for it and and wonder. We can go right to the scriptures. And if we do those things. Your ears will start hearing more. About what God says. Here's my will for you. Here's what I want you to do for me. Here's what I want you to walk out. See because I see. You're living by the Holy Spirit. You're serving others. You're loving that guy over there who hates you. I see you doing these things for me. And God's a rewarding God, by the way. If he sees you doing the things you're supposed to do, you ain't got to tug on him and ask for that gift. He's going to throw some at you. A rewarding God. A just God. And by the way, because of the sacrifice that was made with his son Jesus, he's a friendly God to us now. Remember, we became unfriendly toward him, and he redeemed that. So he says, I'm your friend again. Listen, people of Facebook 24-7 but they won't talk to the one true friend. We got one true friend, God. See, I'm a good friend to my wife, but I ain't her best friend. I'm not a foolish man to say I am. God is her best friend. She's not my best friend. God is my best friend. My children are not my best friends. God is my best friend. See, God's put something in my heart. He's based me on his word. If you ever hear me say to my children, I'll do anything for you, hit me with a brick. Because see, that's a lie. I won't do anything for them because I can't do anything for them. We got to get off this, I want to be the best and grib everything. I can, I can provide it all. You can't. You're going to fail. Teach them to rely on the one true God who can deliver anything they need. Mom and dad will fail. See, I'm a realist. I like the truth. I tell my children some facts at ages that people just gag. I can't believe you told him that. He's only three years old. He won't have to be told when he's 26 and behind bars now, will he? He'll know it now. So hopefully he'll walk that thing out. See, you want to operate in God's will? Tell your kids the truth about his scriptures. Put the Xbox down and learn something. Put your stupid iPhone away. By the way, they are stupid. They might be smart, but they're stupid sometimes. Put it away. It's dominating their minds and their lives. Use Facebook for what it's meant for. Don't don't use it as a gossip session 24-7 and a way of life. 
I don't know if you remember the story I told. Rachel came in, our friends in Charlotte. Uh, Sandy's, you know, she's on, fa- they're having troubles, her and Ken. Da, 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 Rachel, call Sandy, tell her to get off Facebook for three days, her marriage will be fine. The report came back. We're doing great. We got involved in the fireproof series, and now we're, we're doing that ministry in our church together. One little, now what if she wouldn't have been obedient? What if she would have said, Charles, you don't know what he's talking about. But she did it. And look at the fruit she got out of it. Something she thought was failing multiplied fruit and affected who? Not just them, others. Friends in the church, others in the community. By just being obedient to God's word, not my word. See, I told her what God would have said to her, I believe. Get off of Facebook (laughs) and repair your marriage. In other words, quit dogging your husband to the public and get personal with him and repair your marriage. And Will, you can hit me with that brick if I tell my kids that. <laughs> but see, people get caught up in that mentality. And it's, it's like they're making up for something they never can fill the void in. I'll do anything. No, I'll do everything I can. <laughs> but I won't do anything. I won't break the law for you. I won't lie for you. So don't tell people you'll do anything for them. That's ridiculous. In fact, don't do anything for everybody. Do things that are good and noble and right. The rest, there's plenty of other friends they can find to do that stuff. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Operate in God's word and it will flow With righteousness. If you don't operate in his word. It'll flow. Like a sewer. Who wants to swim in that? I'd rather swim in righteousness. Any day. So just again. Remember these these concepts of. Again. Get off the what's God's will in my life. Does he want me to be this or that? Let me get founded in God's will for my just day-to-day living. My day-to-day relationship with him. How I can serve others. How I should love my enemies. How I should zip it sometimes and just love somebody. How I should tell myself to take a hike and leave me alone so I can let the Holy Spirit guide my footsteps. You want to get somewhere like A to B quick? Let the Holy Spirit guide you. You won't get off track then. You'll stay right on track. You might not know where you're going all the time, but see, that's the purpose. He's going to take you there. Safely. Safely. Don't fear the world. Just fear God. His word is supreme. Myself, I love his word. And I like correction. And I like to read correction in there. It's all over the place. You ever want some correction with no one around? Just pull that out and get corrected real quick like... You'll see the barometer swinging all over the place. But then again, I also like the love of it too. I love how he talks to me and tells me how he loves me. And that my mistakes are not counted against me. That I am a co-heir with his son. I don't know what higher position you want in life, but that's pretty good. A co-heir with the king. How can you get better than that? You can't. 
Quit striving to get somewhere because you're already there. You want a position? Let me tell you something. Resume. Co-heir with Jesus Christ. You don't get better than that, people. That's awesome. So let's just walk these things out. God's will for our life. Walk these concrete things out that we talked about tonight. And then you'll start lining up where, okay, now here's where I want you to go in your own personal life. But just get these day-to-day things with me done, this day-to-day operation with me, my fellowship with you. Let's get that on track, and then we'll work on these other things. Let's mature first, and then you be prepared for what's coming. Thank you.